The Bell X-1, Bell Model 44, is a rocket-engine-powered aircraft, designated originally as the XS-1, and was a Joint National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics U.S. Army Air Forces U.S. Air Force supersonic research project built by Bell Aircraft. Conceived during 1944 and designed and built in 1945, it achieved a speed of nearly 1,000 miles per hour (1,600 kilometers per hour, 870 kn) in 1948. A derivative of this same design, the Bell X-1A, having greater fuel capacity and hence longer rocket burning time, exceeded 1,600 miles per hour (2,600 kilometers per hour, 1,400 kn) in 1954. The X-1, piloted by Chuck Yeager, was the first crewed airplane to exceed the speed of sound in level flight and was the first of the X-planes, a series of American experimental rocket planes and non-rocket planes designed for testing new technologies. <laughs> Design and development Topic. Parallel development In 1942, the United Kingdom's Ministry of Aviation began a top-secret project with Miles Aircraft to develop the world's first aircraft capable of breaking the sound barrier. The project resulted in the development of the prototype turbojet-powered Miles M.52, designed to reach 1,000 miles per hour (870 kn, 1,600 kilometers per hour) over twice the existing airspeed record in level flight, and to climb to an altitude of 36,000 feet (11 kilometers) in 1 minute 30 seconds. By 1944, design of the M.52 was 90% complete and Miles was told to go ahead with the construction of three prototypes. Later that year, the Air Ministry signed an agreement with the United States to exchange high-speed research and data. Miles Chief Aerodynamicist Dennis Bancroft stated that Bell aircraft personnel visited Miles later in 1944, and were given access to the drawings and research on the M.52, but the U.S. reneged on the agreement and no data was forthcoming in return. Unknown to Miles, Bell had already started construction of a rocket-powered supersonic design of their own, with a conventional horizontal tail. Bell was battling the problem of pitch control due to blanking. The elevators. A variable incidence tail appeared to be the most promising solution, and having already decided on it for the M.52, the Miles and Ray tests supported this. <laughs> Research studies The XS-1 was first discussed in December 1944. Early specifications for the aircraft were for a piloted supersonic vehicle that could fly at 800 miles per hour, 1300 kilometers per hour at 35,000 feet, 11,000 meters for 2 to 5 minutes. On the 16th of March 1945, the US Army Air Forces Flight Test Division and the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, NACA, contracted with the Bell Aircraft Company to build 3 XS1 for experimental supersonic later x1 aircraft to obtain flight data on conditions in the transonic speed range the aircraft's designers built a rocket plane after considering alternatives turbojets could not achieve the required performance at high altitude an aircraft with both turbojet and rocket engines would be too large and complex the x1 was in principle a bullet with wings its shape closely resembling a Browning .50 caliber .7 mm machine gun bullet, known to be stable in supersonic flight. The shape was followed to the extent of seating its pilot behind a sloped, framed window inside a confined cockpit in the nose, with no ejection seat. Swept wings were not used because too little was known about them. As the design might lead to a fighter the XS-1 was intended to take off from the ground, but the end of the war made the B-29 Superfortress available to carry it into the air. After the rocket plane experienced compressibility problems during 1947, it was modified with a variable incidence tailplane following technology transfer with the United Kingdom, following conversion of the X-1's horizontal tail to all-moving or all-flying 
Test pilot Chuck Yeager verified it experimentally, and all subsequent supersonic aircraft would either have an all moving tailplane or be tailless delta wing types. The rocket engine was a four chamber design built by Reaction Motors Inc., one of the first companies to build liquid propellant rocket engines in the U.S. after considering hydrogen peroxide, acid, and aniline, and nitromethane as fuels. The rocket burned ethyl alcohol diluted with water with a liquid oxygen oxidizer. Its four chambers could be individually turned on and off, so thrust could be changed in 1,500 lbf 6, n increments. The fuel and oxygen tanks for the first two X-1 engines were pressurized with nitrogen, reducing flight time by about one and a half minutes and increasing landing weight by 2,000 pounds but the rest used gas-driven turbopumps, increasing the chamber pressure and thrust while making the engine lighter. Operational history Bell Aircraft Chief Test Pilot Jack Woolams became the first person to fly the XS-1. He made a glide flight over Pinecastle Army Airfield, in Florida, on 25 January 1946. Woolams completed nine more glide flights over Pinecastle, with the B-29 dropping the aircraft at 29,000 feet 8, meters and the XS-1 landing 12 minutes later at about 110 miles per hour In March 1946 the No. 1 rocket plane was returned to Bell Aircraft in Buffalo, New York for modifications to prepare for the powered flight tests. Four more glide tests occurred at Murick Army Air Field near Palmdale, California, which had been flooded during the Florida tests, before the first powered test on 9 December 1946. Two chambers were ignited, but the aircraft accelerated so quickly that one chamber was turned off until reignition at 35,000 feet meters, reaching Mach 0.795. After the chambers were turned off the aircraft descended to 15,000 feet 4, meters, where all four chambers were briefly tested. After Woolam's death on 30 August 1946, Chalmers' slick Goodlin was the primary Bell aircraft test pilot for the X-11 serial 46062. He made 26 successful flights in both X-1s from September 1946 through June 1947. The Army Air Forces was unhappy with the cautious pace of flight envelope expansion and Bell Aircraft's flight test contract for airplane No. 46062 was terminated. The test program was acquired by the Army Air Force Flight Test Division on 24 June after months of negotiation. Goodlin had demanded a US$150,000 bonus equivalent to $1.68 million in 2018 for exceeding the speed of sound. Flight tests of the X-12 would be conducted by NACA to provide design data for later production high-performance aircraft. <laughs> <laughs> Mach 1 flight The first manned supersonic flight occurred on 14 October 1947, less than a month after the U.S. Air Force had been created as a separate service. Captain Charles Chuck Yeager piloted USAF aircraft No. 46062, nicknamed Glamorous Glennis for his wife. The airplane was drop-launched from the bomb bay of a B-29 and reached Mach 1.06 700 miles per hour 1,100 kilometers per hour, 610 kn. Following burnout of the engine, the plane glided to a landing on the dry lake bed. This was XS-1 flight number 50. The three main participants in the X-1 program won the National Aeronautics Association Collier Trophy in 1948 for their efforts. Honored at the White House by President Truman were Larry Bell for Bell Aircraft, Captain Yeager for piloting the flights, and John Stack for the contributions of the NACA. The story of Yeager's 14 October flight was leaked to a reporter from the magazine Aviation Week, and the Los Angeles Times featured the story as headline news in their of December issue. The magazine story was released on 20 December. The Air Force threatened legal action against the journalists who revealed the story, but none ever occurred. 
The news of a straight-wing supersonic aircraft surprised many American experts, who like their German counterparts during the war believed that a swept-wing design was necessary to break the sound barrier. On 10 June 1948, Air Force Secretary Stuart Symington announced that the sound barrier had been repeatedly broken by two experimental airplanes. On 5 January 1949, Jaeger used aircraft No. 46062 to perform the only conventional runway launch of the X 1 program, attaining 23,000 feet in 90 seconds. Legacy The research techniques used for the X-1 program became the pattern for all subsequent X-craft projects. The X-1 project assisted the post-war cooperative union between U.S. military needs, industrial capabilities, and research facilities. The flight data collected by the NACA from the X-1 tests then proved invaluable to further U.S. fighter design throughout the latter half of the 20th century. In 1997, the United States Postal Service issued a 50th anniversary commemorative stamp recognizing the Bell X-16062 aircraft as the first aeronautical vehicle to fly at supersonic speed of approximately Mach 1.06 km per hour, 806.88 miles per hour. Variants. <inaudible> 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 Later variants of the X-1 were built to test different aspects of supersonic flight, one of these, the X-1A, with Jaeger at the controls, inadvertently demonstrated a very dangerous characteristic of fast Mach 2 plus supersonic flight, inertia coupling. Only Jaeger's skills as an aviator prevented disaster, later Mel Apt would lose his life testing the Bell X-2 under similar circumstances. X-1A Bell Model 58A Ordered by the Air Force on 2 April 1948, the X-1A was intended to investigate aerodynamic phenomena at speeds greater than Mach 2 681 m per second and altitudes greater than 90,000 feet specifically emphasizing dynamic stability and air loads. Longer and heavier than the original X-1, with a stepped canopy for better vision, the X-1A was powered by the same reaction motors XLR-11 rocket engine. The aircraft first flew, unpowered, on 14 February 1953 at Edwards AFB, with the first powered flight on 21 February. Both flights were piloted by Bell test pilot Gene Skip Ziegler. After NACA started its high-speed testing with the Douglas Skyrocket, culminating in Scott Crossfield achieving Mach 2.005 on 20 November 1953, the Air Force started a series of tests with the X-1A, which the test pilot of the series, Chuck Yeager, named, Operation NACA Weep. These culminated on 12 December 1953, when Jaeger achieved an altitude of 74,700 feet meters and a new airspeed record of Mach 2.44 equal to 1,620 miles per hour, 724.5 meters per second, 2,608 kilometers per hour at that altitude. Unlike Crossfield in the Skyrocket, Jaeger achieved that in level flight. Soon afterwards, the aircraft spun out of control, due to the then not yet understood phenomenon of inertia coupling. The X-1A dropped from maximum altitude to 25,000 feet 7, meters, exposing the pilot to accelerations of as much as 8 grams, during which Jaeger broke the canopy with his helmet before regaining control. On 28 May 1954, Major Arthur W. Murray piloted the X-1A to a new record of 90,440 feet 27,570 meters. The aircraft was transferred to NACA during September 1954 and subsequently modified. The X-1A was lost on 8 August 1955, when, while being prepared for launch from the RB-50 mothership, an explosion ruptured the plane's liquid oxygen tank. 
With the help of crew members on the RB-50, test pilot Joseph A. Walker successfully extricated himself from the plane, which was then jettisoned. Exploding on impact with the desert floor, the X-1A became the first of many early X-planes that would be lost to explosions. <laughs> X-1B Bell Model 58B the X-1B serial 48 was equipped with aerodynamic heating instrumentation for thermal research more than 300 thermal probes were installed on its surface. It was similar to the X-1A except for having a slightly different wing. The X-1B was used for high-speed research by the U.S. Air Force starting from October 1954, prior to being transferred to the NACA during January 1955. NACA continued to fly the aircraft until January 1958, when cracks in the fuel tanks forced its grounding. The X-1B completed a total of 27 flights. A notable achievement was the installation of a system of small reaction rockets used for directional control, making the X-1B the first aircraft to fly with this sophisticated control system, later used in the North American 1015. The X-1B is now at the National Museum of the United States Air Force, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base at Dayton, Ohio, where it is displayed in the museum's Maj. General Albert Boyd and Maj. General Fred Ascani Research and Development Gallery. X-1C Bell Model 58C the X-1C serial 48 was intended to test armaments and munitions in the high transonic and supersonic flight regimes. It was cancelled while still in the mock-up stage, as the development of transonic and supersonic capable aircraft like the North American F-86 Sabre and the North American F-100 Super Sabre eliminated the need for a dedicated experimental test vehicle. Topic X-1D Bell Model 58D The X-1D serial 48-1386 was the first of the second generation of supersonic rocket planes. Flown from an EB-50A S N number 46006, it was to be used for heat transfer research. The X-1D was equipped with a new low-pressure fuel system and a slightly increased fuel capacity. There were also some minor changes of the avionics suite. On 24 July 1951, with Bell test pilot Gene Skip Ziegler at the controls, the X-1D was launched over Rogers Dry Lake, on what was to become the only successful flight of its career. The unpowered glide was completed after a nine-minute descent, but upon landing, the nose landing gear failed and the aircraft slid ungracefully to a stop. Repairs took several weeks to complete and a second flight was scheduled for mid-August. On the 22nd of August 1951, the X-1D was lost in a fuel explosion during preparations for the first powered flight. The aircraft was destroyed upon impact after it was jettisoned from its EB-50A mothership. X-1E Bell Model 44 The X-1E was the result of a reconstruction of the X-1-2 serial 46063, in order to pursue the goals originally set for the X-1D and X-1-3 serial 46064, both lost by explosions during 1951. The cause of the mysterious explosions was finally traced to the use of Ulmer leather gaskets impregnated with tricresyl phosphate TCP, a leather treatment, which was used in the liquid oxygen plumbing. TCP becomes unstable and explosive in the presence of pure oxygen and mechanical shock. This mistake cost two lives, caused injuries and lost several aircraft. The changes included a turbopump fuel feed system, which eliminated the high-pressure nitrogen fuel system used in 062 and 063. Concerns about metal fatigue in the nitrogen fuel system resulted in the grounding of the X-12 after its 54th flight in its original configuration. 
A re-profiled super-thin wing of an inch at the root, based on the X3 stiletto wing profile, enabling the X1E to reach Mach 2. A knife edge windscreen replaced the original greenhouse glazing, an upward opening canopy replaced the fuselage side hatch and allowed the inclusion of an ejection seat. The addition of 200 pressure ports for aerodynamic data, and 343 strain gauges to measure structural loads and aerodynamic heating along the wing and fuselage. The X 1E first flew on 15 December 1955, a glide flight controlled by USAF test pilot Joe Walker. Walker left the X-1E program during 1958, after 21 flights, attaining a maximum speed of Mach 2.21 2 NACA research pilot John B. McKay took his place during September 1958, completing five flights in pursuit of Mach 3 1,021 m per second before the X-1E was permanently grounded after its 26th flight, during November 1958, due to the discovery of structural cracks in the fuel tank wall. Topic aircraft on display X-11, Air Force serial number 46062, is currently displayed in the Milestones of Flight Gallery of the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C., alongside the Spirit of St. Louis and Spaceshipone. The aircraft was flown to Washington, D.C., beneath a B-29 and presented to what was then the American National Air Museum in 1950. X-1B, AFS or Number 48-1385, is on display in the Research and Development Hangar at the National Museum of the United States Air Force, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. X-1E, AFS or Number 46063, is on display in front of the NASA Armstrong Flight Research Center Headquarters Building at Edwards Air Force Base, California. It is usually seen in episodes of the TV series One Dream of Genie, which was set at Cape Kennedy, Florida. Topic specifications Bell X-1 No. 1 and No. 2 Data from Bell Aircraft since 1935, the X-Planes, X-1 to X-45 General Characteristics Crew, 1 length, 30 feet 11 in 9.42 meters X-1A, X-1B, X-1D, 35 feet 8 in 10.87 meters X-1C, 35.0 feet 10.67 meters Wingspan, 28 feet 0 in 8.53 meters X-1E 22 feet 10 in 6.96 meters height 10 feet 10 in 3.30 meters wing area 130 square feet 12 square meters x1e 115 square feet 10.7 square meters airfoil number 1 naca 65 to 110 10% thickness number 2 x1a x1b x1d naca 65 to 108 8% thickness x1e naca 64A004 empty weight 7000 pounds 3175 kilograms X1A X1B X1C X1D 6880 pounds 3120 kilograms X1E 6850 pounds 3110 kilograms gross weight 12250 pounds 5557 kilograms X1A X1B X1C X1D 16487 pounds 7478 kilograms X1E 14750 pounds 6690 kilograms power plant 1 times reaction motors XLR11RM34 chamber liquid fueled rocket engine 6000 lbf 27 kilonewtons thrust X1E reaction motors RMILR8RM56000 lbf 27 kilonewtons performance maximum speed 1612 miles per hour 2594 kilometers per hour 1401 kn x1e 1450 miles per hour 1260 kn 2330 kilometers per hour maximum speed Mach 2.44 x1e m2 24 endurance, 5 minutes powered flight X1A, X1B, X1C, X1D, 4 minutes 40 seconds powered flight 
X1E, 4 minutes 45 seconds powered flight service ceiling, 70,000 feet meters X1A, X1B, X1C, X1D, 90,000 feet meters X1E, 75,000 feet meters Notable appearances in media See also Mach number XS-1 spacecraft Aircraft of comparable role, configuration and era Miles M. 52 Related lists List of experimental aircraft List of rocket aircraft List of X-1 flights List of X-1A flights List of X-1B flights List of X-1D flights List of X-1E flights <laughs>